Hey there, hello there, ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond with another YouTube video to do with the Degrassi shooting timeline. We'll see. There it is. The Degrassi shooting timeline 15 years later. This is basically a revamp of the videos I did, which I accidentally put two different videos for the timeline. So now I'm redeeming myself. It is happening. 15 years later, we will find out about the Degrassi shooting timeline and find out what we had to see to believe. Now the story goes that Rick Murray um, was involved and we'll see a picture of him. So Rick Murray, the guy with the paint and feathers, obviously this picture it's a much better picture than the one I had envisioned at first with him with a gun, and obviously that is not right. But anyway, Rick Murray caused a lot of trouble in the Degrassi shooting timeline. How he got here? Well, in season three, he appeared as Terry's boyfriend, leaving Wilson's in her locker, and Terry is happy having a boy like her. Rick is really shy, and so is Terry. Terry does not foresee it from her, her psychic powers, her so-called psychic powers, are failing her. So anyway, Rick and Terry go out and basically do a few things, but unfortunately it becomes apparent that Rick is nothing more but a jealous boyfriend who basically is mad when Terry does stuff behind his back. So basically, he physically and mentally abuses her. Terry dumps him off and everyone's happy, but after realizing that all her friends have a relationship, Terry feels compelled to get another, give Rick another chance because she thinks that no one else would go after her. So practically, she does to everyone's chagrin. Unfortunately, Rick is just as bad as he was and worse when he basically tells Terry he's not, she's not allowed to go to a party that Jimmy's throwing, accidentally slamming her head onto a rock and having blood on his hands. Terry is put into a coma and comes out of the coma, thankfully. Unfortunately, Rick runs away when Spinner and Paige find out about Rick's abusive behavior. His parents pull him out of school, I guess for Rick's benefit, and to force Rick into therapy and all that. So anyway, season four pops up, and we don't see Rick at first in season four. There are a few episodes that happen beforehand. Not really, you think not really that it doesn't work with the shooting, but it does. So anyway, in the first episode, which was a two-parter, um, Paige finally gets her day at court dealing with Dean, the person who raped her a couple seasons earlier. Unfortunately for Paige, Dean gets lucky, gets off scot-free because of lack of evidence, and also because Paige had secretly kept it to herself and didn't tell anyone, even Miss Sove. In confidentiality, that would have sunk Dean. Unfortunately, Paige's personal problems were harshly felt. After Dean basically bragged about it, she crashes Spinner's car into Dean's car. Spinner gets arrested, but Paige takes the rap, basically telling Dean outside the police station that I'm doing what good people do when they do something bad, confessing. So anyway, that happens. Um, we get the B-plot about Joey trying to get Craig to invest in his used car dealership, but Craig says no. And then comes the episode when Alex and Marco go head-to-head -head for the student council presidency, and unfortunately, Alex thinks she's going to win based on outing Marco as a gay person. However, she changes her mind afterwards, and Marco wins the election. But Marco gives Alex the vice presidency because he believes that Alex would have made a good vice president if she wasn't president. In the B plot, Emma get, has to get over a breakup with Chris and does not like Chris being Liberty because it makes Emma look like a loser. Unfortunately, Emma's inner dialogue screws up everything. She breaks off Chris and Liberty, but at the cost of Liberty and Manny basically making a persona not grata. So then Rick comes back into the picture in Mercy Street, the third episode in the season. Now, of course, the two-parter is one, was a one-hour episode, so that's how I'm going to play it. So anyway, 
Rick comes back to Degrassi. Everyone is shocked, especially Paige, Spinner, um, Ashley, and a few other people are shocked because of, you know, Harry being abused by Rick and put in a coma. Marco and Alex decide to try to get Radich to stop Rick and his tracks from attending Degrassi. In the deleted scene that stupidly has not was not in the real episode, Marco and Alex try to make points. Marco's saying that this is not about the the school's academics, and Alex says that he's an abuser of women. He might do it again. Once an abuser, always an abuser. But Raj basically says that because Rick hasn't been charged with anything criminal and he deserves a second chance, he's allowed to come back to Degrassi. So basically, Marco and Alex can't do a thing about it. Emma decides to step in. Mostly after Paige tells her that with Rick now in Emma's grade, that basically Emma could be targeted. Emma trips Rick in the hallway. Raj chews her out. Although Emma says that practically no one wants him at the school, but Raj disagrees by stating that on the contrary, and this is not one of your stupid clauses. So basically Emma's not happy about it, and so is Paige. However, Paige and Emma come up with a plan to try to get Rick out of Degrassi without breaking the rules. Emma suggests a silent protest, AKA the Orange Ribbon campaign. So basically they agree and Emma passes out Orange Ribbons and people give money to domestic violence, I think, something like that, give what they can. And basically everything's working. Unfortunately for Emma, she does not foresee the fact that the student body takes it upon themselves to destroy Rick. Instead of trying to send a message, you got to leave Degrassi, they pummel him. Now, of course, you got to also realize that the students are also furious that the administration's refused to do anything about Rick leaving Degrassi. So Rick gets bullied and all that, and then he comes to Emma with a check for every cent he's got. Emma looks at the check, but Alex basically rips it up, telling both of them that you can't buy forgiveness and you can't accept forgiveness and all that. Alex goes on a diatribe. About the about helping her mom deal with her abusive boyfriends, which is fine, but Alex didn't realize that Emma could have ripped up the check. Emma probably could have told Rick to get off. Unfortunately, Alex tells Paige, and Paige tells Emma no no feelings towards him at all. Emma proves her worthiness by tripping Rick at the dock. Rick goes off to talk to Paige, but the boys think that he's going to beat up on Emma. Rongo. So Rick decides to try to defend himself, but the boys keep beating him up. Emma realizes that they're taking the cause out of context and protects Rick. Unfortunately, she loses both the cause and her friends, basically being called a hypocrite. Emma then tells Rick the next day, why did you come to Degrassi? And Rick says that I want to prove that I have changed. They'll see, they'll see. But Emma doesn't have a good feeling about it. And Emma also tells Rick that basically, I only protected you to save your hide because I felt bad for you. So then Rick gets involved in a few B plots and a few other episodes. Um, the most notable one is him and Toby having a kissing contest. They're both on Wacky Brain with Hemis and Claire and Emma. And they decide to see which geek could get the most kisses. Unfortunately, because of Rick's popularity or lack thereof. Toby easily wins. Toby feels so bad, he gives Darcy $5 to kiss Rick. Unfortunately, that doesn't go well, and Spinner and Jay basically call him for saying that a Niner could get stalked and all that. So anyway, now comes time stand still. The episode that changed everything. Practically, um, Rick goes into the school with a new chapeau and looking good, but Jim, uh, Spinny... Uh, yeah, Spinner and Jay basically don't want Rick to be happy, so they throw the chapeau into a dumpster, and unfortunately, they dump Rick into the dumpster. Rick well, tries to get up from the dumpster, but then realizes he sees spray cans, and basically decides to get revenge on them, because he might think that by getting revenge on them, they'll probably back off. After spray painting their cars, Rick bumps into Jimmy. And then they both bumping the snake who asked Jimmy the three longest rivers and who has won the most NBA titles. I can't remember the three rivers off the top of my head, but I know the Boston Celtics won the most NBA championships they have for a while. Jimmy is now on the team because Hannah St. Clair caught Mono. So it's now Jimmy, Emma, 
Toby and Rick. Rick does not want Jimmy on his team because Jimmy's one of the tormentors. Emma basically tells Rick, you should go to Simpson. Rick refuses to because he's he knows that he's going to get named and all that. So he goes to Radich, realizing that Radich could help him out. Unfortunately, how Rick describes Jimmy is basically, he's bothering me and he won't be my friend. He does not tell Radich about the bullying. That leads Radich to basically tell Rick off, saying that, I can't force you to be friends. It takes two to tangle. Come back to me when something serious happens. So he has loses that. In the meantime, Sean and Alex see that Jane Spinner's car got axed. And Alex said that Rick obviously did it. So basically, Jay wants to go to Radich with it, but Sean reminds him that what made that he wouldn't get answers because he would Radich would definitely want to know why the why the spring pain happened because you know Rick retaliated. Jay says, "Screw that! We've got to get him back for this." They basically find Toby, who's affiliated with Rick, and give him a busted lip. Jimmy is talked to by Rick, and Rick basically tells Jimmy that, you know, he's suffering through months, and now Toby's going to get the brunt, too, because Toby's affiliated with Rick. Jimmy realizes that it's gone too far. They try to get Rick out of Degrassi. They failed. He's here to stay, if you will. So practically, Rick and Jimmy get along with each other, and Jimmy decides to respect Rick and basically protect Rick in front of Jay Spinner and Alex. Rick does not help matters by flashing the X at them. And basically they want revenge on Rick, no matter how hard it is. The next day we see Rick looking at the um, fact that he has his mom helping him with the suit for Whack Your Brain. While his dad, a traveling salesman, is not around. He complains that his dad's not around, but Rick's mom says that he would have loved to help out. So anyway, Toby comes by the house, and Rick and tells his mom that he and Toby are going to rule the school and all that. Toby doesn't feel good about it, but he basically swallows his pride and says, yeah, sure, why not? So anyway, Rick's mom also said that she tried to get Rick to go to another school, but Rick refused to listen to her. So anyway, Rick is ready for Whack Your Brain. He tells Emma that, thank you for your help. Me and Jimmy are close together. Emma smiles, not realizing Rick's intentions. So anyway, they do the Whack Your Brain and all that. And Rick saves the team by answering a last ditch sports question about Bobby Jones, the master sculptor. So anyway, he saves the team and now there's a tie break or bonus round, if you will. Unfortunately, Rick holds on Emma's hand too long and that's suspicious. So anyway, in the bathroom, Rick and Spinner and Jay talk. Spinner and Jay ask him how he was so good at trivia, and he says, well, I read a lot. I have a lot of time for that. Basically, they decide to tell Rick everything was cool. Rick leaves to go back. Well, they also tell Rick, you should do the tiebreak. So anyway, they, they say the plan is on for the painted feathers. Spinner has his doubts because he was not sure if Alex can pull it off, but Jay tells him not to worry because he's dating the VP of student council. No one asks questions. So Rick saves the team and wins over Northern Tech. One problem though, he gets the painted feathers targeted on him. Everyone laughs at him. Not everyone, but 98% of the audience laughs at him. Rick feels betrayed. Rick is in the hallway while Emma tries to come down saying that no one's gonna remember this. You help the school if you're smart. And then Rick, for some dumb reason, decides to kiss Emma, hoping that, you know, Emma has an affection for him. Unfortunately, that's wrong. Emma helped Rick from the bullies, but that was her intention. Rick looks forlorn when he has a trophy in him. He goes home. No one's around to help him. He goes to his dad's desk. He sees a gun in the box, and he has some weird thoughts. Part two starts with Rick looking down at the gun. And then at school, they're discussing how the Whack Your Brain thing was going to be edited out. They have to edit it out. JT and Danny, or Libby's brother, if you will, laugh at how Rick was. And Toby says, what about happened to you? 
You wouldn't laugh. Oh, yeah, sure, I would laugh. Rick comes back to the school, not changing his clothes at all, clutching his backpack. Toby tries to head off Rick, saying that everything will be fine. Rick's going to get his answers. But Rick refuses to believe Toby and says that this is the one time I want to be at school. After the credits roll, Radich on the video system basically shames Degrassi by saying that I have never been embarrassed in my 25 years as educator for this. You will be caught. I will catch the perpetrators. And if you have any information, come to me. I assure confidentiality. Basically, JT tells Toby about his little friend and all that. Toby is not happy with it. And then Spitter decides to tell Jimmy and them all about the prank and all that saying that he's happy that he's got him, and basically that they might have gotten him out of Degrassi. Jimmy is not too pleased about it. He and Spinner fight, literally. And then in the deleted scene that you don't get to see, um, Spinner basically mocks um, Rick. Radich wants answers, so he tells Spinner to meet him at 3.30 in the office. Radich then goes to Rick and apologizes for everything and says, take the rest of the day off. We'll figure something out. Rick says, but I want to go to my locker. Radish says, okay, fine, but leave afterwards. Snake is not too happy with how Radish is dismissing Rick. Says, do you have a plan? Radish goes, he can't do more harm if he's at home. And then practically yells at Snake by saying, this is not preschool and making friends is not part of the curriculum. Obviously missing the point, as usual. So anyway, Rick's in the cafeteria ready to shoot Paige because Paige was the one who spread the anti-Rick rhetoric. However, Paige realizes how sickening everything is and says that everything has gone too far. Before the gun is visible to Paige, Rick puts it down and says, I'm sorry for what I did to Terry, finally apologizing. So anyway, he goes to put the gun back in his locker and all that and washes himself off in the bathroom. He hears something and runs to the stall. We hear Spinner and Jay talking about how Spinner just realized, oh no, what did I just do? I just incriminated myself. But Jay tells him that Jimmy was the perfect inside man and all that. Spinner chimes in, clues in, and they decide to blame Jimmy for everything, knowing that they can throw the scent off themselves. Unfortunately, that's all Rick can take, and Rick decides to go after Jimmy. Jimmy tries to calm him down, Rick shoots Jimmy. Although Rick does not look at Jimmy when he shoots him, he just gets Jimmy in the spine, it could have been much worse. Unfortunately, Rick Rampage moves on towards Emma, Sean, and Toby. They all try to calm him down, but Rick is willing to shoot anybody. He then basically tells Emma that you made my list, either to, girls to kiss or Girls who I don't want to deal with. He was upset that Emma led him along, made him look like a fool. Sean tells him that everything may be bad now, but we can fix this. Unfortunately, Rick says, it's too late, I already shot somebody. And then he's ready to shoot Emma, but Sean rushes in and blocks him. We see a gunfight happen and a gunshot go off. But both of them go down like they've been shot. So then, you know, Caitlin and Joey pop in because, you know, there was this subplot about Joey trying to sell his house and all that. But they put themselves in the timeline by stating that they had to get to the school because of shooting and all that. So basically, Craig is upset himself, seeing Jimmy almost dead on the floor. Toby is interviewed by a detective saying, what could your friend have done? He doesn't know. Toby doesn't know much. Emma is consoled by Snake and Spike. Radish comes into the media room to talk to Snake because he wants warning signs. Snake says he agrees to it, but he also wants to tell Radish off by saying, this kid's been to your office two or three times in the past few days. Have you heard of where he's in? I bet you don't remember. And Radish does say, I have 700 students to deal, to deal with. And he also says that, how did I know one guy was going to bring a gun? Which is true. But Snake also says that this tragedy could have been heard if you had listened. But Spike breaks up the argument. Paige tells everyone in the classroom that there's been a shooting. 
Hazel looks at an empty desk, which is Jimmy's, and puts two and two together. Unfortunately, her fears are made possible by the fact that Miss Sove tells her Jimmy's been shot and says that we'll get you to the hospital after the lockdown. So basically, Jimmy is wheeled out oh, and all that clinging to life. We see Sean being talked to by Brad while well, Toby is being interviewed. He has a cast. So the gunshot possibly either hit Sean in the shoulder or it wounded Rick. We would soon find out that Rick was the one who died, not Sean. Rick did indeed get the gunshot. The school is now put out of lockdown and sent home. Everyone sent home. Alex laments her role, saying that, why did I have to get involved in this? And Jay says, don't worry about it. You're fine, aren't you? And then he looks at Spinner, who comes out of another classroom and says, dude, I thought you were shot. Spinner grovels because he just realized Jimmy got shot because of Rick. We told Rick about Jimmy. We got Jimmy shot. Jay sure Spinner that everything will be fine, even though Spinner wants to confess to the police because he knows that they're going to catch him. Spinner owes it to Jimmy. But, but Jay tells him that either way, you he was your best friend, no matter what you did. So anyway, Spinner is physically shocked that Kerwin Isaac's house is filled with lots of people for the news and all that. Ashley wants answers why he shot Jimmy. Toby is upset because, you know, they're, they're making Rick look like a, a fool. His friend is a school shooter. Snake realizes that the school failed Rick and basically didn't clue into the bullying and all that. So anyway, Ella doesn't know what to think about it. So anyway, we see the aftermath, you know, Sean and Ellie, Craig and Joey and a few other people. Toby and Emma. So that ends that. Now it's time for Back in Black when the school opens up on Monday. Not to classes, but to reflection. You have an hour of reflection and then you can do whatever you have to do. You can do homework and all that without a classroom setting. Sean is relishing his role as a hero and all that thing on all the papers. All that. He gets interviewed and he's happy about it. And he'll find out what type of Girls welcome he might get. So anyway, Craig and Toby are in the media room discussing things. Craig says, why are we praising this guy? Why are we having sympathy for Rick? He shot Jimmy, you know. And um, Snake basically says that, you know, we can't blame a lot of people. It just isn't right. So basically what ends up happening is that Toby is still shocked by it. Uh, Snake would also talk to Sean about his involvement and all that. Emma bursts into the media room crying because she can't handle it with everyone staring at her basically because they realize that Rick could have shot Emma dead. All that. But she thanks Sean dearly for what he did. That he would take a bullet for her. So anyway, they do this mask thing with Miss Silva. Sean dip, hand, dip hands himself. All that. Alex still is overcome with guilt. She talks to, to she tells Jay she has to talk to somebody, and Jay says, "Be careful how you say it," because he knows that Alex could confess to everything. So anyway, Sean is told that his parents made a statement on his behalf, and Sean is pissed off because his parents sent him from what's not in Toronto, but it was clear why because Sean had deafened the kid and almost went to jail. And all that. So anyway, Sean meets the deaf kid while going on a jet ski adventure. Sean ends up nearly dying from the jet ski, but Tyler saves his life. Thank goodness for that. Sean then realizes with his life flashing before his eyes that he is scared about, you know, Rick's blood all over his body and all that. Worried that he just killed somebody. All that, despite the fact that the police probably would never have had a second thought about if they needed to arrest Sean or not, because they know that Sean nearly, that Sean did it in self-defense. He's a hero. So anyway, Sean's PTSD manifests itself into staying in Wasaga, unfortunately breaking both Ellie and Emma's heart. The process. 
in the meantime, the B plot involves Toby basically being harassed by JT and Danny about his relationship with Rick. He's a friend and all that. May, here's Toby spill his guts to her and basically tells JT off saying that practically JT should be ashamed of himself because Toby and JT were closest friends, but when JT got famous as an actor, he shunned Toby aside. He abandoned him. And if that didn't happen, then I think Toby would have thought twice about going near Rick. Uh, um, Manny then tells JT he can be the bigger man. So anyway, during the visitation, Rick's mom is blissfully ignorant of things, basically hugging Toby and all that. JT and Manny seem to be the only other Degrassi students who go to the visitation and all that. But JT's mission is to tell Toby that he felt bad because it was it wasn't what he felt. It says it's not how I feel about Rick, but this should never have happened in the first place. So anyway, we get one episode. We get an episode that doesn't have anything to do with the shooting whatsoever. And then we get to Grace's Curie. Although the A-plot was about Craig's bipolarism being finally diagnosed and, uh, and his relationship with Ashley being there. The B-plot was the big part. Dracula is ready to be viewed by the teachers, basically, as a, as a run-through. But unfortunately, Radish does not like it one bit. He tells... Liberty and JT, frankly, that they can't put this play on because of what happened with the shooting and all that. I know it's a week after the shooting and all that, but we just can't do that at all. Like he kiboshes it and puts a musical in front of it to prove how happy Degrassi can be. Basically, by his admission, he probably should have... Um, Compromised with the students, but the student body was not too happy. Liberty and JT decide to take Raj to task, basically saying that Raj is just being mean and just obscene, if you will. So the drama club refused to sing the bad song about Raj, knowing that they could get in trouble. Alex puts it perfectly when she says, I'm all about rebellion, but not something that could get me expelled. Basically, by saying that, you know, they're worried about how they are perceived by the administration. But when Radich basically comes in for a pep talk with Liberty and JT, JT does write a good song, but Liberty decides to sing the song and basically tell Radich off. Radich does not appreciate it and basically gives both of them money and attention to do the musical. But this is a positive because Liberty and JT actually have feelings for each other. A couple of days later, during the episode Bark at the Moon, and this is not the talk, the main plot line. This is like the second, the B plot. Manny and Marco head to the principal's office for some reason. It was supposed to be Marco and Paige because, you know, Marco's the student council president. Paige is with his power squad and she would be the gossip queen. But Paige is too busy with Mr. O about that. If you want to know about that storyline, then check out in the playlist the season four storylines that went to, that were Put in the back because of the shooting thing. Manny and Marco see Radish carrying a big box out the door. Basically, he says that I've been reassigned, meaning that he's been fired. Atzalakos is the new principal and decides to make things happen. Basically, by saying that the school board did all their all they can to help us deal with the tragedy. Now it's our turn. Now we got to give it back to the students. So they think about dances and all of that, and. Hatzalakos hints that she's going to give Dracula the green light with Liberty and JT because they need to get the school back together. And they do. So unfortunately for Raj, he's axed, like reassigned and all that. Now, I'm not going to speculate about things and all that in this because this is just a way of the timeline. So that'll be in the next uh, video. But anyway, Raj is gone. That's the last time we hear or a mention or see him ever again. So anyway, I know that there was a few episodes that Jimmy was recovering from his 
thing and and they take him out of the hospital to see him go see a, a concert with him. But anyway, in Eye of the Tiger, no, sorry, not in the Tiger. I'm getting ahead of myself. The next episode is Secret, when basically we finally find out how Emma's coping with the shooting. And not too well, I mean. Emma seems to be melancholy and not really social or doing well in school. Understandably, of course. Emma keeps getting dropped from Dracula because of her inattentiveness and all that. Spike and Snake talk about her, saying that she just has that vacant look. She's not going out. She doesn't have friends over. Something's wrong with her. And Snake basically tells Spike that, you know, Emma had a gun pointed at her head. How would you react? I love that. Emma realizes that everyone's worried about her and tries to have everyone not worry about her. But unfortunately, internally, she's suffering. She then finds out about Jay because, you know, Jay is the link between Sean, with Sean and basically goes to the ravine with Jay as a way to cope with Sean leaving. Jay basically asks Emma to perform sexual favors on him. Emma gets the bracelets and that actually gets her confidence up and she does well to get her Dracula spot back. Even flaunting her bracelets. Unfortunately, Spike and Snake are not too pleased when she comes back at two in the morning. But basically, Emma tells them that with her not being able to sleep, she thought she would take a walk and think about what happened and all that. Snake, the two, the um, Snake and Spike, basically tell her that we can talk tomorrow and all that. And Emma looks at her bracelet smiling. Unfortunately, her high, if you will, gets crushed down when a case, a case of gonorrhea is in the school. And unfortunately, because it's now common knowledge that Emma had, had given Jay a blowjob that basically she got it. And unfortunately, the whole school wants to stay away from her. So basically, the end of the, the Dracula is a mess because no one wants to get anywhere near Emma. So Emma has to face her trouble. Everyone agrees that Emma is back, but Emma needs to go to the STD clinic and all that. And off screen, we know that Emma got the help she needed. She kind of realizes that everything needs to be fixed. And now we get to Eye of the Tiger and Jimmy coming back to school in a wheelchair. Well, that everyone's happy Jimmy's back. Spinner is happy too, but also because he knows that he can help Jimmy out. He also, of course, is wracked with guilt over the fact that he's basically being told not to say a damn word about what happened with Rick and Jimmy. Spinner decides to try his best to make Jimmy look and feel good about himself. And he does, in a sense. Unfortunately, Jimmy then tells Spinner that, you know, his life is ruined. His basketball career is basically over. He can't walk again. He just wishes that Rick had pointed the gun in a different spot and killed it all. Spinner says, that's crazy. Jimmy feels bad about himself because his soul earlier has been crushed. Spinner decides to tell the truth and basically tells Jimmy that in the bathroom, we bump into Rick, but we talked about how we made it look like you were the person behind the painted feather spring. And Jimmy fills in the last line. And then I got shot. So unfortunately, Spinner is being made an outcast at the school. All that. Rightly so. Jay is basically angry at Spinner, basically saying that he knew that Spinner would fess up somehow. Spinner basically says, Jimmy deserved to know the truth. But Jay, of course, is more pissed that he's being named as a co-conspirator, if you will. So basically, they get drunk and decide to crash Jimmy's welcome back party. Jimmy then basically gets in front of Spinner when Spinner tries to drive home drunk. Spinner says, everything is gone. I just want my best friend back. But Jimmy tells them off saying that you were never my, we were never best friends. You've done a lot of bad things to me. And basically telling Rick that I did everything where it was you who did the painted feathers prank. That was ungrateful. And you didn't do this to help me out. All you needed to do was try to help yourself cope better by trying to alleviate your guilt. 
The next day, Spinner goes to the school and tells Hasselakos everything. He basically names Jay as a co-conspirator and says it's Payne and Feathers Frank was my idea and all that. Hasselakos asks her secretary to talk to get Jay down to her own office and says she's appalled. She knows that Spinner has done some dumb things in the past, but this is not right. Spinner basically tells Hasselakos that he knows, he knows, and he's willing to take a massive suspension. Wrong, though. It's not a suspension. It's an expulsion. Zero tolerance for bullying and all that. Hatzalakos has no choice but to throw the book at both he and Jay. And of course, they both leave Alex out of it. Because Alex, of course, was not part of why, you know, the situation. I know she did the painted feathers, but because Spinner and Jay basically talked Rick out of any doubts about them, but to give the doubts to Jimmy and all that, that was what he had to do. So anyway, unfortunately for him, he's now suspended, expelled. Now, of course, it's important to know that Spinner never told Hatzalakos about the fact that that guy, that he, they did, he didn't say that he and Jay forced Jimmy Hand, like Rick's hand to hurt Jimmy. That the student body kind of knows, but anyway. So, anyway, Spinner and Jay break into the school a few episodes later because Spinner wants to graduate with everybody else. Unfortunately, they fail, but Spinner takes the summer courses and goes through a year of redemption and it works. He knows he's going to get chat on, but his friends all agree. Spinner is allowed to come back to Degrassi after his expulsion. Jay refuses to, basically stating that the school needed a scapegoat, and they knew that Spinner would crack. Although, he doesn't know that Spinner actually came on his own accord to Hatzalakos. Jay must have been pissed that Spinner wouldn't name him at all. Emma would have a better year near the end of season four, putting everything behind her. Unfortunately, season five would turn out to be dark, especially with her relationship with Peter and her friendship with Manny. Jimmy would unfortunately stay in the wheelchair for the rest of his Degrassi career. Although he took risks and all that, but his dad was basically no help to Jimmy at all for anything. Alex would always have the guilt spread him on her, and although she never got punished for it, she internally punished herself, if you will. It wouldn't be the last time bullying would hurt things in Degrassi. And it wouldn't be the last time that Degrassi Community School got involved with a gunshot, with a, gu with a gunshot, all that, or a death at the school. So that's huge. And all that. And basically, Rick's family is never heard from again after the visitation episode. We don't know what happens to them. So anyway, thank you for watching slash listening to this thing. I hope you liked the timeline and all that. Bullying is not cool, no matter what your intentions are. And I know that the students made it their intention to try to get Rick out of Degrassi, but he didn't want to leave. And you can't force him out by any stretch of the imagination. So thank you for watching, and there'll be some more videos coming up today. Stay tuned.